right, we'll go ahead and start the staff meeting for the Board of Commissioners January 8, 2015, at about 9.03 this morning. Uh, first item on the agenda today is proposed uh, Bureau of Land Management Road Closures. Uh, I know it was just the uh, first time that we've had the opportunity to talk about these types of things. Uh, Rocky McVay with OC Counties has shifted a document to me indicating that the BLM is looking at some road closures. So I'll keep you on the package. And the Ashland Resource Area. Typically, as a board, what we do is we come to the decision if we want how we want to proceed. Do we want to oppose these? Do we want to support them? Do we want to give a presentation of what is going on? Uh, John Britzma from the Ashland Resource Area is usually the one that deals with this. Um, uh, just something yes, that, so the board actually does have a policy position already. Doesn't mean you can't change that, but I want you to be aware of it, which is that typically, generally, overall speaking, they're in disagreement with road closures by the federal government. But that they would look at them individually on a case by case basis. But we have the option to have somebody come in, do some sort of presentation, give us just some straight up facts and not any sort of a slanted. So, yeah. It'd be case by case basis. But yeah. maybe if, uh, is it Examples of where we said, okay, uh, so road closure in the past couple of years would be like there's two parallel roads, one going to the tree line, one going mm -hmm. to a prairie, and if the, the, the destruction of the prairie is going away, then you know, hundred a couple hundred feet apart, it doesn't really uh, limit the access. So that, that, that restoration be able to affect, allow that closure to happen, but still have general public access into those uh, air affected areas. So there are some obvious issues. There's reasonable reasons for it, but there's also some reasons that aren't as practical, I'm assuming, uh, that, that road closures in general is, is a agenda that some people are pushing for other reasons. Yeah, you, you road closures in general, you know, it, it's a, it, they need a certain amount of mileage mm -hmm. to be able to create new roads to do projects. And to be able to do that, that means they have to decommission a road over here to be able to create something new because it only allowed X amount of uh, miles, so to speak. They also have a uh, X amount of dollars for maintenance, so they have to look at that. There's, do they have any projects in the area? Was it an old logging road that is now mm -hmm. has uh, six or eight foot trees growing up in the middle of it? It's not being accessed anyway, but still considered an open road that you're supposed to maintain. There's lots of different variables. Sure. And, and let me just clarify a couple of things. Um, the, the, the board weighing in is just that, the board weighing in. It's mm -hmm. not your decision to make. Right, it's sure. just your, a, a, a policy position and they ask for your input, but they can make whatever decision they want to make regardless of okay. what your input is. On these particular roads, which you have a map, the closest county road is about 15 miles away from any of those roads, and the closest state highway is about four to five miles away. The proposed closures do not impact any of the county roads we have jurisdiction over. It wouldn't change any travel patterns for or volumes on any county roads. The main roads in the area that typically are used are Copco Road, West Grizzly Road, and other popular roads through the area. These do not include any of those roads. All of the closures appear to be spur roads and that they were used for, as Doug said, one of the reasons of harvesting timber. Um, and it, in terms of the county, we didn't go out and drive the roads, but that's from the information that they provided. Um, none of them are through roads, so they're essentially terminus dead end roads. Um, with the exception of one of the roads, which is listed as 40 4E 35.3, all of the roads have been noted by BLM as either being previously barricaded, so there wasn't uh, access, or overgrown before the fire and prob probably not passable. Some people still will try to pass when they're, when they're overgrown, that's yeah. why I say probably. And it doesn't look like any of them had any traffic on them, except for the one that I already cited before the fire. And really, they were probably mostly used for remote access, forest access, for things that were like hunting, four-wheeling, outdoor recreation type um, issues. And bottom line is, in terms of administration that really isn't an issue, it's just sheerly a policy. So the, uh, if I don't know if you're familiar with the, the, uh, the Golden Gulch fire area up in that 
particular area in the road system up there? Maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a spaghetti bowl of road. Yeah. There are more roads up in that area than people are constant. It's it's crazy up there how many roads there are. And as far as you know, there's no groups of, of any kind that are opposed to these roads being closed and maybe using them in some sort of a yeah. basis for recreation or from what I can tell in this particular area, there's there are so many roads it's not going to limit any access. Okay. And as you can see on these pictures that there that have been passed out already or the maps. Mm -hmm. the, uh, you're seeing spur roads that are dead ending between two roads that are less than a mile apart. Okay. So you're not at, you're not limiting any access. The, uh, what they're going to do, from my understanding, is part of the uh, post-fire recovery mm -hmm. is they're going and recovering as much and salvaging as much timber as they can off of that fire, and then on some of these roads that they don't they can reallocate into new construction of another road in another area okay. to be able to uh, salvage that area, but they have to be able to decommission a piece here to be able to add that new uh, mileage to be able to gotcha. do their salvage over here. Makes a lot of sense to me. So that's kind of what's going on, but I just wanted to have uh, uh, an idea from you guys where we want to do. We want to support it, or do we want to say nothing, do we want to oppose it, what, what's the uh, what do we want to steal from here? And we want to say this is our typical, we oppose everything unless there's something else going on. Well, I don't know, you know, is that policy, again, if it's just symbolic, um, I guess we could have the, the real advantages to doing that. Uh, in general, for maintaining our road system is important for sure. people's access to the woods. I think that's a very positive thing. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see the access go away. No, I totally agree with that. Um, those, those are, these are public lands and they're, in my opinion, entitled to use them. Um, at the same time, being good stewards of it is important. And some roads, like you said, some of these spurs that are... Well, I guess it's hard to you know, blame the policy saying, uh, yeah, in general, I would oppose roads being closed, but in certain specific situations like these, I think there's some good reason for it. So, um... Is there one? Well, I'm, I'm against closing roads, um, and I would stand by the policy that has been said. I think it's, and without having any further knowledge of, except we just want to close a few, it just doesn't make sense to make a, say, oh yeah, go ahead, but in my view. Would you like to have a free location from? The yeah, or even to add, take the opportunity to look at them, you know, if they're pretty accessible. I'd like to see what we're looking at, you know, before I would say, hey, yay. Yeah. So they won't stop their timeline yeah. 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 so that we can go out and look at roads. And even even if we ask someone to come in and give a presentation, they'll still proceed with their timeline. And we'll if, probably get what they gave us, too, you know? Yeah, they'll probably just come in and explain. But they might, you know, some of the key points, it, this is what makes it hard as a policy decision. You can be against closing portions of these roads that aren't usable. But what that means is it limits access for future timber harvests because they have to be able to trade mm -hmm. roads that no longer need to be used for roads they need to create. So if we are always opposing road closures, which right. we can do, then when we go to have a timber harvest, they can't create new roads to actually execute a timber harvest because they have to have an inventory of uh, mileage that they can use to create new roads. That's exactly why I said I don't think, you know, like the policy to me doesn't, uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense. On an individual case-by-case -case basis, I think it's a much better way to... So are they planning timber harvest? That's what all this is about. Oh, this okay, is, I thought it was all about road closures. No, this is the post-fire recovery of the uh, Oregon Gulf fire area. Oh, okay. This is part of that project. So they're, we're trying very diligently right now to work with the BLM on the OC lands to be able to uh, salvage as much as possible on these lands. Even when they don't, even when a road closure like these is being proposed, they give, they give back a credit against future roads, so they may not have identified a temporary cell if they're already going to do or execute, but what they'll do is they'll have a bank of mileage that they can use when they do execute a temporary cell. Okay. So it isn't necessarily a direct correlation of we're closing these down to open these, we're closing these down and they may need that mileage to open these or they may bank that mileage until they execute a timber cell and can use that mileage to create a new road system. 
So we don't have any authority, but what, what benefit is our, or impact is our support, or? I think it's political. Yeah. Uh, I think it's, you are, you know, preserving people's right to access. Mm -hmm. uh, this, as I said before, these are dead-end terminus spur roads that doesn't necessarily eliminate people's right to access it, makes it right. less. Uh, but somebody may hear, oh, the commissioners uh, were okay with closing some roads without knowing the entire story, so it could kind of reflect poorly on it, the it, board. It and could, or they could just be against closing roads, or you could have the complete opposite. There's some people that want all the roads closed, and yeah. you won't agree to ever close a road. So you've got to have the full spectrum of opinions about it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's why I think policy for me would make sense to you know, not have a blanket like policy, just a case by case. We look at it and say, yeah, this one looks good, this one we don't agree with. Uh, and just proceed on that basis, is my opinion. I think case by case is good too. Yeah. In this particular, Commissioner uh, Roberts, you indicated you don't know the area, you don't know the roads, do you need a little bit of time to go over and take the uh, personal trip up there and take a look at those roads? And do you know what time frame they're looking at wanting to get on this? I mean, if I've been time? Well, maybe, mm -hmm. we, if we gave ourselves a week, I don't think it would hurt anything. Okay. So, okay. Would that be an out of the time frame to go look at yeah, everything okay. and take these maps and go drive those with you and family? That would be great. I would appreciate that. Okay. So, what can you do? Some of these roads aren't drivable. Take a home and buy two. Take supplies. Yeah, don't get stuck. Um, it, it's the. Uh, but even hiking, I mean, a lot of people enjoy, you know, there's more than four just driving. Areas up here and you don't get lost. Bring a GPS. There's so yeah. many roads in there, you might get turned around pretty quickly. I know a lot of people who live up there and say, yeah, I got lost last week. <laughs> Didn't you live here? Yeah. So, but not bad. <laughs> yeah, we'll send out. We'll search and Bring your GPS. Uh, but, uh, so, can we put this on next week's agenda for the staff meeting? And we can talk about them. Yeah, let me also do that. that all, all but one of these roads that are de, just decommissioning rather than um, doing long-term closures. That gives them the opportunity to, to, bank them. To, to, to bank them, but to utilize them to get they need access for timber okay. on all but the one that they're going to do the long-term closure on, and that's the one that I gave you the exception on earlier. So there's a pretty sensible policy in this case. If there's a, these are OLC lands that are designed for timber harvest and so we'll do, uh, one week from today, we'll go ahead and have this back on and Commissioner Roberts time to go ahead and do our due diligence. Thank you. Okay. Uh, second item today on the agenda is a special invitation at a regular meeting. <coughs> Commissioner Roberts asked us to be put on the agenda today. So uh, Well, I just had um, looked at and attended other meetings of government um, sessions that are started with an invocation, not an innovation, <laughs> like it says on the, the memo. And um, <laughs> type slower. Um, and so I just wonder what you guys thought of it. I just think it'd be a great um, addition to our meetings. It could be inclusive um, to all denominations and uh, bring in an expanded um, interest of the citizens to our meetings. I included the Supreme Court ruling from last May that um, may help um, be someone's F you know, mind if there was um, legal concerns, but maybe Joel would want to lay in more on that as well. Uh, and, and, I, and I would agree, I think having an invocation before your meetings is legally allowable. However, with some restrictions, um, we would need to not discriminate based upon viewpoint, um, not just amongst the various Christian religions, but um, we could have some. We could have the high priest of the local satanic temple want to come in and um, ask for, you know, provide an invocation, and, and we would need to to allow that and, protect and accommodate that. And so that would be one of my concerns. I would also have some concerns if we were out there actively recruiting specific denominations to come. I think we would need to take more of a passive. Put on our website, hey, if you're interested in in providing an invocation, contact this person. Um, as opposed to, to speaking to individual pastors or, or other members of the clergy to provide an invocation. Um, but legally, it is allowable. I think we would just need to make sure that it was um, inclusive and, and not excluding anyone at all. Um, there's a, 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 the Florida legislature is dealing with some of these issues right now. There's an activity scene in their legislature. Um, the uh, local satanic temple, so when I said the high priest of Satan, I wasn't being facetious, um, came in and, and demanded access to, to 
put up their own uh, display and they were required, the Florida was required to allow them so you know they had a nativity scene next to the satanic uh, display as well. And I'll just add we, we have had an indication passed. Uh, it was actually Jack Walker who wanted to have it added to the agenda. It didn't take very long before Jack Walker asked to have it taken off the agenda. It wasn't Even successful? Well, I, wasn't, I'm, I won't rate it whether it's successful oh. or not. I'll say it created <laughs> issues. People sometimes would, would offer a prayer, but they would want to talk about political issues that the board was going to deal with and use that as a form to say what they wanted to say um, in the name of whoever their higher power was. Mm -hmm. um, also, some people were asked to provide an indication because no one was there and they'd caught the commissioners off guard what was said several times and they decided that they didn't want to have that happen anymore. Um, and before that, I don't know if it was ever done or not. I just were there any legal I remember having no, yeah. I just remember having Jack <laughs> talk to me about it. And he was well you all know Jack. He was pretty firm in his beliefs, but he was certainly distraught. Uh, after a couple of things occurred that we felt were appropriate. Mm -hmm. so, well, I mean, I think the, the concept is great. The practice of it was a little bit obviously concerning for the reasons they were mentioning. Um, so, I don't know, I guess beyond that, it's hard for me to. <laughs> Yeah, but to, to facilitate you know, something like this, I just have experienced it in meetings. I think it's such an, a great um, addition to the meeting, but you know, unless it becomes what they were talking about, uncontrolled, yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, unless we put in temporary, and how do you see? What's your vision? How do you see this happening? I just do you see staff going questions. out there and asking for people to do this? Do you see yourself going out there and asking for people? Oh, I don't I mean, think that would be inclusive. I, I think being people. on the website, um, like was mentioned, and people can, you know, alert people if they want to, to include them. Uh, they can, uh, I'd be involved if, if necessary to, any, to remove any staff time if uh, scheduling um, took too much of the staff time. but. I really think staff can be, I don't think we can do staff to recruit. Not recruit, to building. handle the scheduling. Uh, I mean, we could, we could, staff could be used to schedule who was going to appear on a, on a particular agenda. If they, if that person requested it. Yes. Okay. I'm just kind of thinking overall, the like cost of everything, certainly the would be a thing, it would be great in most cases, but then in the certain situations where somebody did come in who was, maybe the high priest at the store or whoever it might be isn't going to be quite as positive but it's kind of a down tone as you get started we, I don't know if we're opening up it to, to that um, there's a downside that again needs to be weighed and, and I know there are people who would take that, that opportunity to come and disrupt and, and make a statement that may not be a spiritual statement per se, but uh, they'll make their statement in that, um, in that vein. Um, that wouldn't be a positive thing, especially since you have to be inclusive. But they're my concerns. Commissioner, I know you're very uh, devout in your faith My question for you is, uh, if this thing if this concept and we go forward with this and it starts becoming political or it starts becoming a uh, very uncomfortable situation that, that has happened in the past and we know this, what it looks like, what it looks like, what's happened in the past. Um, what, would it be, what would you do with that? Well, I think anything would go down. We, it's all to, to review and adjust, remove, and nothing's set in stone, I don't believe. So the format of your agenda is set in stone unless you change the stone that's written on because it's actually created by codified ordinance. <coughs> so if you want to change or add something to the agenda or change it, you need to change your ordinance. If you change your ordinance and you want to change your ordinance again, it takes a significant period of time to do that. You'll have multiple meetings before you can just decide we're not going to follow the law anymore today. I'm just going to 
decided to not do what we said we would do in our agenda because we don't like it now. Um, so it, it's not an instant thing, just so you know, because it is set by codified ordinance. And we would need to make a, a change if you're going to add in something significant. It's not a part of the regular agenda. And I would say that this wouldn't fall under regular county business anyway. If uh, someone did not sign up or did not have people to do this for that day, what do you, what, what's your vision of having to should that agenda item it goes forward? Well, we could either have somebody, you know, a call, you know, to attend that, to fill that void if the scheduled person didn't make it. But that would be more yeah. that we can't do it. Mm -hmm. Because that's, uh, now we're putting us in a legal liability on to prove somebody. Mm -hmm. So, that's well, we can I'm hold off on it. I mean, if it's too too sketchy for to put in practice at this time. Well, since you hate to say no to, because it is something that I think is a positive potential, but a lot of consequences that, that may be less than positive. No, I'm supportive of having for I'm very religious myself. I, I maintain those things. But I think we need to put a little more thought into um, this particular item and how the logistics of it will work. And I'm sure you will look into some of the more details for that and bring it back to us. I, I will. And I look okay. at how, like, um, Senate or how they handle theirs, you know, I suppose they have a male staff person, you know. Okay, I don't know if they could do that either. It would be Pretty somebody else down, but since it has to be so inclusive, that's the sticky part of it. Yeah. But, uh, Congress is, it is a little bit different than a local government only because they're considered a, a uh, separate but equal branch to the court system. And the courts are very loath to get involved in the internal workings of the Senate and the Congress. Um, we don't quite have that. Def we don't have that same level of deference. And so, um, you know, the U.S. Congress or you know, U.S. Senate, U.S. House of Representatives, I believe they do have one. I don't know specifically, but I do believe they have a staff chaplain or, or whatever, yeah, the, whatever the term is. But that they 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 kind of have a uh, a pass isn't the right word, but um, the courts are loath because it's it's considered an internal working matter. So the courts don't want to get involved in the internal working of a separate but equal branch of government. Well, I appreciate you thinking about it. Anyway, we can. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, it's on. Look into it. We need to look, need to look into it further. Some logistics and yeah. work with staff to figure out possibly how to make it happen. But if, it, if, we, if we can make it happen to meet everybody's needs and bring it back. Okay. Council, Joel, do you have anything for us today? No, I don't. Okay. Amy? I have a, an agenda, but the only thing on it is consent calendar right now. Oh. Besides, you know, request for public uh, comment. So I'm not going to pass it out to you. There's one thing on it, which is just consent calendar, um, which are minutes. So, uh, the next thing is in order to increase 0.78 full time equivalent positions in the expo department. And essentially, this is uh, to bring the director's position back up to one FTE from 0.52, and uh, pro uh, project specials from 0.9 to point or to 1.0, and their uh, senior maintenance person uh, from 0.8 to 1.0. They're doing this within their current budget, so they're not asking for an increased appropriation authority. They're just asking for the authority to add back the FTE that they cut back on in adopting the budget. And so Oregon budget law requires you to not only appropriate the dollars, which you've already appropriated, you already have the dollars in the budget, but also FTE. This should help them uh, run in a more compliant manner. Is that uh, accurate, or you know? Uh, I guess it's hard to, to, to yeah. I, it, essentially, they're saying that they don't have adequate FTE to perform the functions that they need to perform, and I'm not going to answer for whether or not they'll. I mean, I don't have any authority over the fair board. So I don't want to answer for how they'll run or not. Typically, whether we've added FTE or taken FTE away hasn't made a difference in how they perform financially. 
Um, it may have a difference in how they provide service to the public, which is perceptual, mm -hmm. which would be what I would say probably is the biggest benefit from what they're doing here, plus they're recruiting for an executive director, so it's kind of hard to hire an executive director for a fair and expo program that's only 0.5 to UFD. Uh, or, you know, the minimus, I mean, 0.9 to 1. Right, and that was, that was one of the things he was referring to as a director because of the, of the contract employee. It wasn't going to work on people to <coughs> comply and be compliant with what they uh, were asked to do as far as uh, their duties as a director. Yeah, they, they had proposed contracting and, and they don't meet the qualifications yeah. for a contractor with what they're requiring of the position that qualifies as an employee. And uh, so their, their planning process included looking at the potential for contracting for that, which they can't do. Because they want to direct the work and they want to have that person directing staff. And, you know, essentially you can only contract for an outcome, I'm simplifying this, but for an outcome, not yeah. for how it's accomplished or what hours someone works to, to accomplish it, who they see survive, or what they have to do in the performance of accomplishing the goal. All, all around mostly employment law issues. Then it's a good question for you. What I'll say is the appropriations in their budget mm -hmm. are not necessarily that this has been budgeted for because okay. the budget includes, well, they're probably about, I, I honestly I haven't checked since I got back, but before I left they were about $230,000 fund balance, which is part of their appropriation. But they didn't say at the budget time we're going to spend this money on these positions. I see. They just don't need more appropriation to add positions because the money's already in the budget. Okay. Well, to me, it seems reasonable to make the director a full time position and the other two to say be the minimus. So, the uh, it seems to be reasonable to me. Any other questions of staff on it? No. Yeah. All right. Do you? I do it here. I'm asking, waiting for a motion. Oh. <laughs> well, I will make the motion uh, to approve order number 2 15, authorizing the county administrator to increase 0.78 full time equivalent positions in the expo department. And a second. Any discussion on that? Any deliberation? Mm -hmm. Does anyone else to feel that people? Commissioner Ballard? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Ballard? Yes. All right. Anything else, Dan? <coughs> uh, no. All right. All right. We have uh, item number five. There's a liaison report. <coughs> I know you guys have lots of liaison reports yeah. to be able to provide. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> um, Danny, do you want to? I wouldn't do that here. I would do it in executive session. Yeah. Okay, we'll do that. Um, other than that, uh, OMC meeting. Uh, I don't know if there's been no really liaisons the last week that I like can report on. It's been kind of quiet. I actually had a little time off for the kitchen. <laughs> Took the kid. So uh, we'll move on to community service awards. Okay. In the past, we've sent out letters to the various nonprofits and <coughs> other organizations that, that have volunteers and requested that they fill out the form and get back to us. I wasn't, and then I would get the forms uh, and give them to the commissioners who would then choose who they wanted to give the awards to. Um, didn't know if that's where you wanted to keep going. I put in copies of what we have and um, Commissioner Roberts uh, had someone else that she wanted to consider. So. And I have um, a write up on that one too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I need one for that. Okay. Um, commu community members have requested Bill Meyer to be nominated for community award, and so I put that there, and Nelson could be talking about it. So he kind of provides a great service of what's going on in our county and county government and it, no matter who and what slant they have politically and so um, 
I just put that together so you guys could consider that as well. And looking at historically, I believe everybody that we have done a community service work, it doesn't say it on the front, on, on the form that they fill out, but they've all been volunteers or non-profit organizations. It doesn't mean it has to be that. So the community service, they're all unpaid um, positions or, or people? They or sometimes pay. non-profits, people who work in non-profits. Who are paid. Yeah, they're paid. But they're non-profit service. Well, I'm open to looking at other people in the community, whether they're paid that do a service to the community. I don't know if that conflicts with anything. That's um, bad, but, but we don't have to. I mean what the majority of the board wants to do. I think recognizing people um, that do a service to our community um, is pretty open. I mean, a lot of people um, have impact. And definitely, uh, for instance, Bill Meyer, I know um, even a lot of the radio shows, they, they put a lot of stuff on there with, with um, an open mind and, and people listen, tune into it and and come involved in what we're doing because of it. But definitely the, non the community service, you know, the nonprofits are important as not d diminishing those at all. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me just add a couple of things just for the two new commissioners. Um, these community services work are a category of recognizing people in our community in the manner by which we've done that is essentially volunteer work or nonprofit uh, um, acknowledgement. However, the board has also made other acknowledgements through things they call like service awards, or we have what's called a chairman's choice. So when you're the chairman of the board, or chairperson of the board, you get to pick a person who you think has a significant impact on the community. So there are other ways to notice people outside of this particular program. Uh, and there have been random examples of the board having a discussion about a certain person wanting to acknowledge. You know, uh, somebody one time uh, administered CPR to a person in our airport to save their life. I remember that. And so our board decided that they wanted to acknowledge that person publicly and give them a service award rather than a community service award. Right? Mm -hmm. So there may be uh, other ways of acknowledging people that you all can discuss, and not necessarily that it all has to be included under this type of, of, of process. I mean, okay. You guys, you, you all can essentially acknowledge anyone you want to acknowledge if two of the three of you agree you want to do it anytime you want. So, and I agree with acknowledging other people in different, you know, that aren't necessarily volunteers and nonprofits. But yeah, as a separate category, I think that's probably more appropriate than to expand this. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and keep the program like it is. We're going to send the letters back out uh, to the nonprofits and volunteer and organizations. And we have for now. Can I and we'll start with mm -hmm. this later. Sure. Okay. Thank you. All right, we have item number seven. We'll do our calendars. Uh, as you can see, is there any... Uh, Conflicts coming up, you guys have 
County College coming in? We do. Can we meet Corvallis on Thursday from a 9 o'clock meeting? What kind of, what time, we'll, time of the drive is we'll, that? We'll cancel our meetings. Two and a half hours. Yeah, we'll make sure that oh. when you're doing those things, we won't have a meeting here. So. Two, I don't know if anyone's explained this to you or not. I can't remember if Joel or I did prior, but Tuesday and Thursday are essentially a call work session and staff meeting. And they're not required by our charter ordinance. So the only meeting that's required is the Wednesday meeting. And if we're going to cancel the Wednesday meeting, we actually have to have an order canceling the meeting. The other two meetings we just don't have to schedule. We're never required to schedule them. Um, so anytime that there's going to be a, not a quorum, then we'll typically just not schedule them rather than we don't give a notice of cancellation because we just didn't schedule it. We're not required to. So that's the difference between those three days. So are we definitely canceling Thursday? The uh, I mean, the county college Thursday, when was, what's that, 17? 15. 15. Oh, yeah, yeah, January 15th. That's y yes, we're not going to have it. We're not going to have it. Thank you. We're not going to have So that puts our discussion on the roads one more week out. About two weeks. Okay. To find you. We can put it on the between being in Corvallis for. Yes. <laughs> what do you think you have it done by Tuesday? We'll just put it on Tuesday. I'll try. Well, spend the weekend right away. I mean, I'll put it on the entire weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, is that too much? Um, I'd rather wait. I'd rather wait to the next Thursday. If that's the, too much of a we delay. Next Tuesday morning. So instead of being Thursday, we can just delay it till Tuesday. The, okay. So that way it's not dragging it out forever. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. Sounds good. I'll be at the uh, ONC board meeting this afternoon. I'll be back for uh, reception this evening. Um, any, any other conflicts? Need to be Basically, what we do here is we review our calendars to make sure that anything that's supposed to be publicly noticed is properly noticed. So this is, you look at your calendar and you come to the meeting, this is what I'm doing the next week, are there any conflicts, and that way staff knows that they need to notice something. So is there anything that you can see coming up that needs to be put here for public notice coming up this next week? Sometimes it will happen where you didn't realize that you were both going to be, at least two of you were going to be somewhere. Right. Um, and you know, typically we're required to notice our meeting with an agenda. The reason why we notice if you're going to go somewhere together, as at least two of you, yeah, the, uh, the same event, is because if that event and in, in information to what you may deliberate towards a decision to, then we're required to know it should be there. Now, if you both, if, if two of the three of you show up at a dinner that's, you know, celebrating somebody's retirement. That's not information we're going to deliberate towards a decision. But if you act, you know, all of a sudden there's a meeting by BLM on table rock closures that you, one of you didn't realize was going on, one of you were planning on going, and two of you show up, one of you needs to leave if we didn't notice it. So that's why we need to notice it. So your, and don't take this wrong, but your lack of preparation or knowledge of something doesn't exclude our necessity to notice the public that there's going to be a quorum of the board there gathering information. So. If you if you do decide that you're going to go to some and you walk in, one of you need to leave. I believe next Tuesday Rick and I are touring the jail. We're going to have to no reschedule that. Oh, you have to reschedule. Yeah, it. the sheriff couldn't make that kind of trouble. Okay. So, but yeah, that's the kind of thing I have to to know about. Okay. Uh, are you good? I heard the person speaking at the uh, Rotary. You guys need to attend No, that was the County Republican Women, which I called and canceled my my speaking okay. and, and pointed. Okay. Today, yeah. um, Rotary speaking. I spoke Tuesday at Rotary. Okay. I think the this weekend. Everybody was planning on coming to Calvin's. No, I'm going to a so ready, not so ready, but a economic development thing in Calvin. Eagle Point on Saturday. Yeah, um, I won't. So the Eagle, so the Eagle Point economic development you'll be attending. Saturday, ten to ten to twelve. Okay, so it's another See that that's the kind of that's why we go over these calendars like this so that we know. We notice what notice these things. I'll be the way the game moves and the way that. No, I don't know that. Come on down. I'm foggy. Only three hours later. Yeah. So we'll be there. We'll have a drive. So. All right. So 
we're, we got the Eagle, Eagle Point Economic Forum, which will be the other side. I'll send it out. Okay. So and maybe that's more than 24 hours. Okay. Yeah. And so maybe he's having one. Yeah, yeah. that one I knew about because we all signed you up. So. Okay. But that's okay. another two weeks. No, just no, that one. Okay. 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 I didn't break my calendar. Okay. All so right. It's coming up. <coughs> we have some executive sessions. So with that, we're going to go ahead and move into the executive session.